just as we did when we worked this uh, cast on edging back and forth, we would cast on the initial set of stitches using the long tail cast on method. I have 16 stitches here and I already arranged them for working in the round on four double pointed needles. You can use any other way you like uh, that will help you work in the round and you can cast on any number of stitches. If you're not familiar with working in the round on uh, double pointed needles, go to tenderosaday.com slash five dash needles. Uh, make sure the stitches are not twisted around the cast on edge and uh, if you prefer to join stitches for working in the round go ahead and join them. I will not join them for working in the round. I will move uh, to making the first round of the pattern right away without joining. Another thing is uh, if you're working on one um, circular needle then you will need a stitch marker to show you where the beginning of the round is. I won't use a stitch marker for now because uh, it slips off the double pointed needles and I usually use the tail as an indicator where the uh, round uh, begins and ends. So round one of the pattern. Uh, in this round we'll make a very interesting um, thing uh, but uh, before we get there first we knit one stitch through the back loop so we insert the tip of the right needle from right to left into the first stitch and see I'm not joining the stitches I simply pull the yarn so that the gap between the needles is closed so knit the stitch through the back loop and then we would make a new stitch by pulling a wrap from under the cast on edge so go down with the tip of the right needle like this right under the cast on edge then wrap this needle with the yarn and pull this wrap from under the cast on edge like this this is a bit unusual but it's not hard at all let's do it again but first we knit one stitch through the back loop because this is our pattern repeat so we knit one through the back loop and then we do this funny thing we go underneath the cast on edge then grab the yarn and pull it oops I almost lost my stitch and pull it from under the cast on edge and then we do it again knit one through the back loop and then get that yarn and make uh, a new stitch and again and again we do it up until we get to the end of the round so I finished the first needle then I shift the stitches so that they are in the middle and I move on to the next needle and do exactly the same thing I knit one stitch through the back loop and then make a new stitch by pulling the yarn from under the cast on edge and I'm gonna knit through the back loop my last stitch and make the wrap and make a new stitch okay uh, so that's the round one and now that we finished it aside from doing all that funny stuff with making stitches in an usual way we also noticed that we doubled the number of stitches see how many stitches I have on the needles right now it's double the number of stitches that I cast on and that's totally fine we need those stitches to create the pattern those crossed strands and we'll uh, turn these extra stitches into that lovely pattern in the third round of this pattern but now we get to round two the second round is uh, fairly easy uh, in this round what we're gonna do we're gonna uh, make these stitches look even longer by slipping them we're gonna not uh, we're not gonna work the extra stitches we're gonna slip them uh, with the yarn at the back of the work and we're gonna purl these stitches that look like pearls we're gonna purl them through the back loop here's how it happens bring the yarn to the front of the work for purling and then insert the needle the right needle basically from left to right under the back strand of the stitch like this then wrap the tip of the needle with the yarn and pull the wrap through to purl the stitch then bring the yarn to the back of the work and slip the next stitch with the yarn at the back of the work and make sure that this stitch is that extra stitch you would see them they, they look a bit different than the regular stitches they look like big loops 
basically wraps, that's what they are. And now we uh, repeat these steps. So we bring the yarn to the front, purl a stitch through the back loop. Then bring the yarn to the back and slip the next stitch. Yarn to the front, purl through the back loop. Yarn to the back, slip the next stitch. Because we twist stitches when we purl them through the back loop, we make the edging a bit tighter, less stretchy. If you want to add more stretch to the, uh, to the edging, then purl these stitches through the front loop as usual. But I'm gonna purl them through the back loop because that's what the pattern tells me to do. So purl through the back loop and slip the next stitch and keep going until you get to the end of the round. So purl through the back loop and slip the last stitch with the yarn at the back of the work. That was round two of the pattern. Now you can see that the stitches, those extra stitches that we made from uh, the wraps, they look longer. And that's perfect because in the next round we're going to turn these stitches into those cross strands and we're going to bring the number of stitches back to the original number of stitches that we cast on. All of that will happen in round three. So in this round what we're going to do, we're going to uh, basically knit two stitches together through the back loop but if we do it as is then we would get um, uh, a jog uh, right here when the round ends to avoid this jog and to make the pattern consistent we'll use a very interesting technique that is called the traveling stitch basically what it means it means that we're gonna shift the beginning of the round by one stitch uh, to make to help you better see what ha what's happening, I'm going to use a stitch marker that I will place here for the beginning of the round. Because uh, if you are working on a circular needle, you will have that stitch marker anyways, right? But I'm going to use it, even though I don't generally use a stitch marker when I use uh, when I work in the uh, on the double pointed needles. I'm going to use it in this round just to show you what this traveling stitch thing is. So uh, here's what we do. We slip the stitch marker and put it away. So we remove it from the work for now. Then we slip the first stitch purlwise, insert the, uh, need, the right needle from right to left. And then we place the marker on the right needle. So we shift the beginning of the round by one stitch because the beginning of the round is where the marker is, right? And now we're going to knit two stitches together through the back loop. And when you do that, make sure that the first stitch that is sitting under your left needle is that long stitch, the extra stitch. Because this way you will get the pattern uh, that, is, uh, that we want, right? Otherwise, if the purl stitch is the first one, then the pattern will look completely different. Probably nice too, but not the one that we are looking for. So insert the tip of the right needle from right to left into both stitches and knit them together through the back loop. And then do it again, two stitches together through the back loop and again and again. Because I'm working on a double pointed needles and I have four groups of stitches, I end up with one odd stitch over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slip the stitch then put this needle aside for a moment and then take uh, one stitch from that needle to make it a pair and then knit them together. So now this needle is done and I'm going to pick up this needle again and knit the stitches together, you know, the stitches that are sitting on the next needle. So I'm going to knit them together again and again and again and when I end up with the odd stitch I will slip it, put this needle aside and then find a pair for this stitch and knit them together. If you are working uh, using the magic loop technique or uh, if you're working on a circular needle you won't have to do that but if you're working on double pointed needles and that's what we often do when we make mittens and socks then here's what uh, that, here's how you uh, solve this issue of a knot stitch you simply take another stitch from the next needle and that's it and then we keep going 
until we get to the end of the round. So this is my last needle and my last odd stitch. So I slip it and then I find its pair on the next needle. And this stitch is actually the one that is traveling because this stitch used to be the first stitch of the round and now it becomes the last stitch of the round. So it traveled from the beginning of the round to the end of the round, shifting the place where we start the round. And because we did that, now I'm going to remove the marker because I'm not going to use it anymore. I have a new beginning of the round and I still have a tail here to tell me where this place is. So because we did this, now the pattern over here will be uh, continuous. There won't be any disruptions, there won't be any jogs, it will be continuous and no one will ever know including you, <laughs> where that um, beginning of the round is because the pattern won't show a thing. And now we are back to the knitting. Uh, the last round of this pattern is the easiest one. We simply purl every stitch on the needle. Simply purling without any unusual tricks, uh, just plain purling stitch by stitch. Why we need this round? We need it uh, for two reasons. First of all, it, uh, this ridge that we form, it kind of highlights the texture of the pattern. Plus, it separates the edging from the main pattern of the project. And we can use, uh, because of that ridge, we can use any stitch pattern we like. Uh, anyways, it will be, the edging would be separate because this ridge kind of visually separates it. So we make that ridge in the last round of the pattern. And here we go. This is the edging that we've just created in four simple, more or less, rounds without any jog, without any interruptions, with a continuous pattern right here where the, um, the round begins. And you can use this edging for any project worked in the round. Now that the edging is finished, we can work on the main pattern of the project. There is no need to move the beginning of the round back by one stage to the true beginning of the round. It is much easier to accept the shifted beginning of the round and use it as you work in any pattern of your choice. To read this tutorial as a set of step-by-step -step photo instructions, go to tenrosaday.com slash crisscross dash cast on dash round. To download it as a PDF, join the club at tenrosaday.com slash club. Thank you for watching this video and have a wonderful week. I'll see you in the next tutorial.